welcome everybody. Thank you. Thank you everybody for joining us uh, to stay for our Q&A after the film. Um, my name is Leilani Nishime and I'm here on behalf of the Seattle, Seattle Asian American Film Festival. And I'd like to welcome, welcome um, the stars of the movie. So uh, first of all is Sujata Jatade, who's the, not only the star, but the writer and the director of the film. Um, and uh, Ritesh Rajan and Anna Kaja, who um, play respectively Sunny and um, the- sorry. Jaya. Jaya of the film. Okay, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> so um, so I'm, like I said, I'm really thrilled to have you all here. And maybe I'll just start off with a question for you, Sujata. Um, so, you know, I think we've been seeing a lot more images of South Asian women in, in the media nowadays, but I think it's still super rare to see um, a South Asian woman who's also a writer and a director. So um, as a triple threat, I'm kind of wondering, could you talk a little bit about what it's been like for you um, as a South Asian woman working in sort of the Hollywood system? I think often in a system that's not really built, I think, for South Asian women and their stories. Yeah, I mean, I one of the big inspirations for making this film was, you know, my years of acting in Hollywood and constantly going in for auditions where a lot of the characters were stereotypical or uh, written from a point of view that wasn't necessarily authentic. So um, in 2016, I wrote, directed, produced, and starred in a short film called Cowboy and Indian, and it did the film festival circuit. And, and it, it was really fantastic just doing the festivals for the first time, mostly Asian American film festivals. And um, from that point forward, I felt really confident and really pushing through to do a feature film as my next film. So I wrote the story from, you know, my point of view, knew that I wanted it to be about a South Asian American family. And then I thought of the premise, which was a young adult who had been a spelling bee champion in the past. And now she has not reached the level of success that one would assume a spelling bee champion would achieve. And, and I knew that I wanted every single character to have um, you know, full, well-rounded points of views and arcs and, um, as I was developing Sunny and as I was developing Jaya, I wanted to make sure that these characters were very real and that they, for an actor, would be exciting to play because that's what I look for in a script and a project. And so that, that was like the initial inspiration was my years of kind of frustration of a Hollywood that was um, treating South Asian characters as one dimensional beings and my desire to make characters and a story that was really authentic and would speak to all of us in a grounded way. Yeah, yeah I think that was really one of the, I mean, I, I love this movie. <laughs> Um, for all the reasons that you said, and I think one of the things that really struck me when I was watching it was, yeah, it was how complicated the characters were. I mean, it feels like they were all really flawed, but all really sympathetic. Um, so yeah, uh, actually, let me widen it up to ask all of you. So how, um, I wonder, can you talk a little bit about how you approach the character, how you sort of found that, maybe that more sympathetic thread, um, and also, you know, sort of how it, um, how you sort of negotiated maybe some of the uh, less flattering parts of the characters, you know, how you sort of, it seemed like you all really embraced uh, even the, the flaws in the characters as well. Um, I, I can start this one off. Um, you know, for, for Sunny, it was interesting that you, you bring up sort of the sympathetic aspect, because for me as an actor, <clears throat> I was approaching it uh, sort of as a pendulum. And since he's dealing with his sickness, I didn't want to be able, I didn't want to show that overtly. And so for me, his subconscious or maybe his insecurities, really what's on top of that layer is sort of this uh, jovial, high energy, sort of sympathetic person um, to, to downplay all of the, the stress that he's going through internally. And, you know, if he's sitting over here at a 10, eventually that's going to crash and it's going to swing in the other direction and he's going to have a breakdown. And, you know, for Suj and I, we, we spoke in depth about 
the sort of colors we wanted to show specifically with the sickness and and you know we wanted that level of tension sort of throughout like is he going to blow up at any sort of moment so as a result i sort of played the exact opposite of that for the majority of the film you know it try to give the most authentic version of it um so that when things did go down you know it was kind of just out of snap so um, I, for me, I, to answer your question about how I, you know, was able to find the, the likability in the character um, I, and, and deal with their flaws, I think it was all there in the writing to begin with. It's, it's what Sujata gave us. And, and like she said, she really did create roles that I know I was, a role I was very excited to play. Um, you know, Jaya is just so well-rounded and and three-dimensional she she embraces her Indian culture in her own specific way she embraces Western culture in her own specific way and she is you know she's coming off of a, the loss of her husband the you know extreme worry about her children and in a sense a, a loss having to do with her son just as far as sort of you know maybe losing her hopes and dreams about what he might become um, and, and yet she has a lot of playfulness and warmth and spirit and energy. And, um, and she's, she loves her children and is fiercely protective. And so all of that was there in the script and I can relate to all of those things. So I just tried to fulfill them. Yeah, it was wonderful how much her, her humor was able to come through as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and just kind of the way that I was so um, astonished at that that moment in the film where um, you apologize to Sonny. It was for me felt so unexpected. That was not how I how I was sort of you know kind of the stereotype right of of that scene would be to kind of react very harshly and yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and that's just that moment just seems so um, I don't know. Uh, kind of shocking in some ways, but really revelatory. Yeah, I yeah and she really does. Sujata created a character that I think is just, she's led by her compassion, especially for her children and mm -hmm. her just wanting them to be well. Yeah, really leading with that. Um, I was also really kind of interested, you all have, have touched on this a little bit, but um, one of the things I thought was really interesting about the film was also how it was about kind of the sex South Asian experience, right? There's so much about South Asian culture in it, but in many ways, it really wasn't um, about that, right? I, I think um, many times when somebody sees a movie with a, a South Asian cast, they're, they're expecting it to be kind of a roots film, like, you know, and the main character is going to be like, how am I South Asian? What is, what is my identity? And that's not really how it played out in this movie. Um, so I was really interested in that. And I, I was wondering how you kind of Brought, and it's, I think that some of you mentioned also the idea of authenticity. So I'm kind of wondering how you um, thought about authenticity in the movie and sort of how you brought that to, to the roles. I mean, just in terms of the story and bringing in South Asian culture, I this was you know a part of my life growing up where I grew up in, a, in the suburbs of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And I was hanging out with my friends that I went to school with during the weekdays. And then on the weekends, I'd be hanging out with my Indian friends. So um, I, I never experienced like a, a clash, a culture clash within me. So I was always just like allowed to choose from the best of both worlds. And um, I wanted to portray that because I feel like there's a lot of us, you know, there's a lot of us that don't really have that, you know, uh, conflict within us about our cultures. And I, and I felt, feel like a lot of projects to this day are, t are like focused on that. Like, oh, I'm, I'm too Indian, I'm too Asian, I'm too this or that. And, and I just wanted to be like, well, what if you're like cool with that? And now we're just dealing with like real issues. And these issues are something that anybody can relate to. It doesn't have to be a South Asian American family or an Asian American family. It can be the, the black family down the street. It can be the white family at church. And so I, I really wanted to focus on that. But also, you know, as I'm me, Sujata, going through life, I 
there are Indian things that are happening around me. I was eating Lay's potato chips masala flavor today. I was, you know, there's like a statue of Ganesh like in my room. So this, this stuff is just a part of my life and something that I don't necessarily think about all the time. So I wanted it to be flavored with the culture that I grew up with and that I'm around all the time, but I wanted the main conflict to be about these siblings who can't get along and why can't they get along. Yeah, yeah it was really, it was really wonderful to see. And, you know, um, it's nice to see Asian American film getting the chance to sort of branch out that way. Um, and, you know, we actually have full lives <laughs> with many things going on. Um, I, I was also really um, amazed by the cast. Like I felt like with every scene, I was like, oh, I know that person. Like how did you get that? How did you get them in this movie? It's sort of like a sort of an all-star cast. Um, so I was really, it was really um, wonderful to see. And so I was wondering, can you talk a little bit too about how the, the casting came together and sort of, you know, was it sort of like a wish list of these are all the people I'd like to see in my movie? It was yeah, the rigor, the rigorous process that Sujata put us through. The the many many auditions. Uh, the opposite of that. <laughs> so I definitely just texted my friends to be in my movie. There was I, I I'm just gonna say as an actor personally, I don't often perform the best in audition type situations and you can't really get what I'm gonna be able to do from like a one minute tape or something that I'm sending you. So I, I'm i just aware of the talents of my friends and, and I know that they have done a lot of work in the past and that I don't have to take them through that process. So that's, that's how I found Ritesh and we had met uh, like two or three years ago. I don't know what the timing is anymore. But it's I been think, a wash, but now <laughs> <laughs> it was like two years ago. We did a panel together and then we yeah. became friends. We did a parody singing video together. And then from that, I, I knew that we had this really great chemistry. And um, so that's how Tesh came on board. He can give like a kind of she a uh, <laughs> we, we went out for lunch or happy hour, I should say. She got me some uh, some egg rolls and some samosas. We went to this Asian fusion restaurant. So it was pretty funny. Um, but she she brought the script. She's like, hey, I finished the script. She had mentioned it to me before. I was like, fantastic. And so I thought she was just kind of gonna spitball ideas with me or kind of just pitch it to me just to have a conversation. And she was like, yeah, so um, I want you to play my brother. And I was like, I was honored and flattered, but I was like, let me read it first. You know, because I didn't know. I'd never read any anything that she'd ever done before. I could be uh, a terrible writer. You yeah, don't she know. could have been terrible. She could. We could say that now. You know, <laughs> but, but imagine if it was actually terrible. I wouldn't be here. <laughs> but luckily, we didn't have to worry about that. And um, it was just a beautiful story. You know, as we said, sort of the South Asian just a backdrop, but the conflict is what was was really hooking to me. It was, it was so universal, um, and to be able to sort of explore that idea within the context of a South Asian lens was very important to me, especially the mental health aspect, just because it's so ignored, um, just even the overall kind of from the Asian sort of perspective, um, just to be able to do a project and be my Indian American itself without always focusing on it. You know, I think a lot of the time our professional lives are so structured by what we hear from people uh, doing the projects like, oh, you need to be more Indian or can you do this? Can you do that? And it, it always leans itself to just becoming a very generalized thing or a stereotype. And this allowed, you know, our both the characters, the conflict and all the culture just to sort of breathe and live their own lives that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then with Anna, I had met her like not very long before I contacted <laughs> you at a, at a gala at an Asian American gala. And um, we were both uh, an presenters. And I think we just met briefly, like not even um, have, we, I don't think we even had a conversation. And I, I think we were in a group photo. Yeah, yeah, I believe we were in a group <laughs> photo. Like, quick, all the Indian people, come here quickly. <laughs> and then I was talking to my friend Vinny, I was just texting with him and he recommended Anna for the role of the mom. And I was like, oh, yes, perfect. And then I, texted her and sent her the script and um, Anna, you can talk more and, about that. And that's probably because at that gala, I said to Vinny, I was like, I can't believe I haven't played your mom yet. I've played everybody. 
She has. <laughs> Indian actor's mom. And, you know, to that point, I played Ritesh's mom. Um, or I like to say he played my son. But it was it it's was true. his TV show, Stitchers. I played his mom on Stitchers uh, years before we did Definition, Please. So we already knew each other. Mm-hmm. Um, and then so Sujata re- reached out to me and she sent me the script and um, or through my reps, I guess. And um, I was just so... I was so refreshed and relieved because this character was not a stereotype. I couldn't play her with, you know, one hand tied behind my back and one eye closed because it was like, just like everything else that, you know, <laughs> played. Like she was actually just a, a nuanced individual. And so um, I jumped at the chance. And also, you know, it was just fun. We all went to Sujata's hometown to make a movie <laughs> in 12 days. Yeah. <laughs> You know, 12 days and to shoot in her parents home that. which is pretty cool so that makes a lot of sense actually i was really when I, I was really noticing when i was watching the movie about how real the setting scene you know oftentimes when you, when you have these movies in people's houses they're all like super polished and they have like all this west down furniture and everything's like <laughs> cleaned up and neat and this felt more very much like i could I, this is a friend's house that i could walk into I yeah. thought the setting was wonderful. And and definitely like the rest of the cast that you were talking about, it's like a who's who of Asian Americans and South Asian Americans in the film. You know, I'm just friends with uh, Lillane who was on Lizzie McGuire and played Lizzie's best friend back in the day. And then friends with Jake Choi, who I, you know, I was looking for a love interest. It could have easily have been a white boy. And I was like, mm, you know what? I'm not going to. I'm not gonna do that. And Jake's hot, so I cast him. And then Tim Chu's another friend of mine I just texted, flew out for the day, did his doctor scene and Parv and Sonal. Um, they all just came out and supported and it, it was really great. It was really a family affair of just um, people that I've known throughout the years who've been really uh, hardworking actors in the business and kind of has stuck it out. and. I've worked with him, th- with, worked with them throughout the years. So it was really, really fun casting. It was just yeah, and then and Mira Simhan, who's a wonderful actress, and and her yeah. daughter, mm-hmm. and it was her daughter's first feature film, and she killed it. Oh really? So with that, with Mira, I was at India Sweets and Spices in Los Angeles, and and talking to. <laughs> talking randomly to Tanuj Chopra, who was just there. And of course, like you just run into random Indians in LA. And then and then Mira came in with her daughter and I was talking to Tanuj about the movie and I'm eyeing Maya. <laughs> I'm eyeing Maya like a, like a predatory casting director. And we're, I'm talking to Mira and I'm like, so does Maya act? And she's like, yeah, she's done a couple, you know, school theater and I was like, Cool, cool. <laughs> and, and then I was like, does she want to be in this movie? And, and she was like, sure. Do you want to like audition her? And I was like, nah, I don't need to audition her. <laughs> I didn't even audition Maya. I didn't audition her. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. She was great. She did great. She yeah. was great. Yeah. She was great. Um, yeah, so it's really, it's really uh, heartwarming too to hear that um, you two first connected at an Asian American event because that's a lot of what we try to do at the film festival um Mm -hmm. when it's in real life we try to get as many of the filmmakers to come as possible and you know so people can sort of meet each other and and talk to each other and sort of share um um, i don't know share experiences so uh since we can't have that kind of um, face-to-face experience i'm wondering if could i also ask for all of you um if you had any advice that you might give um either young actors or young filmmakers um you know especially considering that you all have you know, actual real life careers in show business. Um, a lot of the people who, who are at our fest- festival are really s- just starting out, um, you know, making films, you know, it's their, they're doing it on the weekend, you know, after their day job. So um, I'm wondering if there's any piece of advice you might be willing to give. Yeah, um, I would just say, I love to hear that they're creating on the weekends. I think that's the most important thing to do is just to continue to create even during this pandemic where we can't necessarily go out and have full sets or you know a lot of people together in one space I I feel like there's still a, a chance to be creative so you know 
something that's happening is you're pivoting to like watching TikTok videos, you're watching IG live videos, you're um, watching more YouTube shows and you can do that. Let's say you're like at home with your family. Some of my favorite TikToks and stuff to watch is like Asian kids with their parents or, you know, Indian kids <laughs> doing Bollywood dancing with their grandma. And so I think there's a really cool chance to be thinking out of the box right now and creating, even though maybe it's not like an official, like you are creating a, a full feature film because it maybe it's not the right time, but, but you're just making these smaller type videos just to get your work out there, you know, in any way that you can, that would be my advice. Um, I would say, you know, know what's out there, get educated, you know, look at what others are doing, all of that. But then at the, and this would go for any aspect of it, writing, directing, acting. But at the end of the day, never leave yourself out of it. Always do you, always do you. And if people respond to it, great. And if they don't respond to it, great. But honestly, that's, if you forget to do you and bring you, there's really just no point. It makes it more fulfilling in the moment um, no matter how it winds up and, and you're giving people something that's connected and real to respond to. Um, <clears throat> I would say, you know, do as much as you can to, you know, l learn from others. You know, I, I'm a big, big champion of surrounding yourself with people that know more who are better than you. And, you know, I was lucky enough to be surrounded by these two amazing ladies, you know, I, I, I owe them everything. My performance in the movie is to them, you know, because I felt safe. I had the writing, I had the scene partners, I had the director um, and it's a luxury. And when you find people that you know that you can learn from, just take it as much as you can, you know, forget the ego, absorb everything and, and keep pushing forward. As I said, you know, just, you have to have that unique point of view and you have to constantly just be creating stuff. And, you know, obviously it doesn't have to be feature films but as long as you kind of create the creative bug and you're, and you're working on your voice and you're working on your craft, um, you know, from something that costs $10 to something that costs a million dollars. And if all those pieces are working together, then, you know, it will push you in the right direction. And ultimately, I think that's what it's about. It's just moving one step forward every day. It's, it's good to, it's good to hear that. It's good to like, I don't know, to hear the joy in your voices. It seems like you all really, um, it's really sort of spiritually fulfilling as well, right? It's not, not just the job. Um, so I guess to, to wrap up, I'd love to hear, you know, what, what you all are doing next. I know, I assume that things are slow a little bit right now, given the pandemic and all, but um, I'd love to hear, like, you know, what, what can we look out for for you all? Well, I've used the pandemic to write two features and one pilot <laughs> and... <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, I've been really lazy now. <laughs> um, and so I'm going out to pitch uh, a couple projects pretty soon, as soon as like in two weeks. So um, just, yeah, yeah. So just looking forward to that because I'm really excited about all of them and we'll see what goes first, I suppose. Um, I, I used the pandemic to write a pilot and a half. I'm always behind Sujata. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'll be, you can see me on The Resident uh, tomorrow night on Fox at 8 p.m. Playing then, Manisha's mom. Playing yeah. Manisha's mom. <laughs> I have to ask so, you, who's, who's your favorite son? <laughs> <laughs> it's you for sure. Yeah, you well, for sure. When you're behaving yeah. yourself, but it, don't that tell me so I said that. Manish, <laughs> but you uh, played my mom now twice, right? I know, Two you're different the only shows. One. Has that ever happened? Has that ever happened no. with anyone else? No. Nope. Okay. So I still hold that title. Bonded. <laughs> Bonded. Could you say? Could you say that again? Is that on Hulu? It's Fox. Is, on Fox. Fox. And then um, I'm going to be heading to an. <laughs> sorry, I'm he heading to another state to work on something for a couple of months, but I can't say what it is. But hopefully, I'll Ooh. be able to announce Ooh, it. Oh, that's here. exciting! <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> yeah. There you go. A state. Uh, what am I working on? I'm currently pitching a project right now, so hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll sell that and keep it going. I have another project that I'm working on that's in development, and then 
uh, in the process of doing all these panels, I did have a uh, movie on Netflix drop uh, for Barbie. I'm the voice of Ken, Barbie and Ken. <laughs> so that movie was called uh, Barbie Princess Adventures. So that was good. And then there is a new project coming out, but I can't say when or what it's about. It is it is Barbie related, but uh, <laughs> that's it. Otherwise, you know, I'll get a phone call. I love the idea of a self <laughs> It's so great. <laughs> Isn't that great? It's all different in my head now. <laughs> I know. That's it. Now, now when you watch it, you'll have a totally different point of view. You'll yeah, be like, wow, this guy it. probably loves Indian food. Ken loves <laughs> <laughs> I could tell that in his voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's wonderful. Um, thanks all of you, and we'll keep an eye out for future projects or and ones that are going on right now. Um, and uh, thanks for all you out there in TV land who are watching. Uh, thanks for joining the ninth Seattle Asian American Film Festival. We greatly appreciate your support for our festival. Um, if you haven't done so already, please fill out our, our festival participant survey. There's a link in your confirmation email. Data from the survey is what we use to raise money for our, um, for our festival. Um, we are mostly grants, a uh, grants-based organization, and we really need you to fill out those surveys in order to get those grants. Uh, tickets are still available, um, and you can check out our other programs on seattleaaff.org. On behalf of the Seattle Asian American Film Festival, thank you to all our panelists for coming here, and hope, hope everybody stays healthy and stays safe. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>